The following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with the University of Wisconsin. Summer, spring, whenever it's warm out, I think that we definitely. There are a lot of student organizations in the Concerts union. Concerts outside, I love oh, going down but they don't there. Bring anybody. Well, I can't say that they don't bring anybody because they definitely. Do that. I love Target. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Yes, yes. The Girls style. Can do that. Yes, for like two dollars. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about the social scene on campus, on campuses, I should say, college campuses. And I'm wondering, is is campus college drinking as big of a problem as people perceive it to be? And personally, I think yes, <laughs> very much so. There are so many people who have gotten themselves into trouble, not health-wise, but also academics. I mean, just letting their GPAs plummet because they spent too much time in the bar or at a friend's house just getting wasted, sleeping in the next day, sleeping through class. I, I think it's a huge, huge problem. I think that one of the biggest problems that it's, is that it's become so socially acceptable and that people don't even realize that they may be drinking an excessive amount because everybody else around them is doing the same thing. And you tend to surround yourself uh, with people that are similar to you. So it becomes kind of, I don't know, you almost don't even realize it anymore. I agree with Alex on this. I think we have a culture of binge drinking mm -hmm. uh, in, on, on campus, and it's, it's dangerous. I mean, I, not only is it a problem, it's, it's dangerous for a lot of students who engage in that on a regular basis. I mean, every week people will go out not to drink socially, but to get drunk. Uh, and, and that, you know, is a major health issue. Yeah, I really feel, but I would disagree with you when you say that the, the entire campus culture is that. I know over... I don't know, think the, the entire campus... Like, I think yeah. the overarching, you know, like, like our that, campus but. is known for drinking, but I, I would say in the student of color community, I hadn't noticed it as much. Like, I know that there are some students that drink, but being a student who's lived in the residence halls, there's definitely a wide gap with the students who are drinking over underage and it's just ridiculous. I mean, as far as accountability goes, I know a lot of these students are, they just get warnings and they might get a silly little ticket and it's just like, it's just like, oh, well, think, that's what they do. They're in college, they're young. Do you think uh, they should crack down more? I mean, exactly. do you think housing should? I think, I think right. they should crack down more on these students. I think that there needs to be some alcohol education courses for these students and not these, not just keep doing passive programs. Like each, I know some people probably have seen each chug where you have, you go on to see how much, like if you drink so many drinks, there's so many burgers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like that's, okay, yeah, I'll check that website out, but I'm still going out tonight drinking a fish bowl at the, you know, wherever you're going out to. I don't so. think that would be effective necessarily. I think if kids want to drink, yeah. they're in college, they've always thought they were going to drink, yes. they're going to keep drinking. They're going to find yeah. some way like to that do that it. Right. She hit on the key point right there yeah. is that, you know, it might be a problem, but at some point when it comes to this, I think that you have to take personal responsibility. Like you can try to limit it as much as you want to, but there's going to be alcohol in Madison. Like, so I think this raises a really important question, and that is, should we lower the drinking age? I mean, is it time to reconsider uh, the, the drinking age? I would argue that if you're old enough to vote, if you're old enough to enlist in the military, to sign contracts, exactly. you should be old enough to have a beer. I mean, you should be old enough to uh, consume. Uh, so I personally, I think we should uh, at least revisit, re revisit a serious discussion about whether or not it should be reduced I, to 18. I agree, and I think that if we... I think the transition period is going to be a little rough. Yeah. <laughs> you have a lot of 18 year old high schoolers running out there and drinking, whatever, more so maybe than they already are. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think over time, after that rough transition period, I think the binge drinking level will dramatically exactly. decrease. Exactly. Once it, yeah, exactly. Once it becomes not so taboo, because that's the thing, when you come to college, it's like, oh, I can finally have a beer. <laughs> that's what kids do. And that's why, you know, that's why we have a reputation of having a drinking problem on this campus. Exactly. But if you lower the drinking age, I'm not sure to exactly what age, but if you lower it, I mean, it won't be so taboo that it's like the hip thing to do. Yeah, I think that if the drinking age is lowered, I would say 18. It mm -hmm. gives, the, I feel that it will put high schools and, school, and, and younger schools in the mode to actually educate students on that because they know that those students that they're working with daily yeah. are going to be interacting with alcohol, at, you know, once they hit their 18th birthday before they leave out of high school to go to college. So it'll force schools to educate students. It'll force parents to educate those students instead of, you know, letting them go free. And like, well, when they, they going to, you know, they'll be graduating by the time they get their first drink. So we don't have to worry about them, you know, getting out of hand in yeah. college. There's actually a, a really interesting discussion going on right now among 
uh, college uh, administrators. There's something called the Amethyst Initiative, which, is, uh, which has, I think, over 130 college presidents and chancellors. Um, they've signed on to uh, a, a commitment to at least have a discussion about lowering the drinking age to 18 for exactly the reasons that we already pointed out, that you know, when students get to campus, there's sort of a culture of consumption. Uh, not only does it come with more risks, and it, and it is dangerous because students tend to engage in binge drinking, but you know, if, 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 if students, when they're eight, age 18, are able to do these other things that we consider uh, to come with responsibilities, we should also you know, think of them as having uh, the maturity to consume alcohol. I guess I just don't think that lowering the drinking age, though, is going to change the culture of the way that we drink. I think that some other steps need to be taken. And like I said before, I don't think programs necessarily are effective, but it's personal choices, and it's kind of the way that we... This program is a production of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. If you have comments about this broadcast, please email us at programming at uc.wisc.edu. <laughs> you know, I, like that one, the conspiracy. Like, it was an accident, you know. That was a conspiracy, yeah. Okay, okay, so let's bring it back uh, to on campus. So let's talk about the Greek system for a minute. The Greek system, I know, on a lot of campuses, get a bad rap for being either spoiled or is it just being a category or a way to buy friends? And they don't they don't really do anything for the community. All they do is throw parties and just do social things like that. So you know, what do you guys think about that? I think it's totally wrong. I, I'm in a sorority, and um, I think all sororities and all fraternities are different. You know, they each have their own kind of characteristics. Um, I, I completely disagree. It's just because it's not, you, you don't join, I feel, in my opinion, you don't join a sorority or fraternity, fraternity for them to turn you into something. You know, you come in as yourself with a group of people that you enjoy hanging out with. And it's not like you're banned from interacting with other people. Yeah, I can say this, like, I'm biased on the situation because I am in a fraternity. And I can say that, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, all you guys do is either step shows or parties or whatever. But you guys don't see, or what, you know, the campus community doesn't see is a lot of the, the uh, volunteer events that we do. Or there's a lot of smaller things that don't get publicized, that don't make money. You know? I agree. We have. I'm also in a sorority, and um, I have to say, when I first came to Madison, I was completely against the Greek system. I was like, "Oh, those kids! Like, they're just a bunch of little like daddies, girls who are using all their parents' money and blah blah blah." But um, I really didn't find a lot of people that I connected with right away that I that I found were really similar to me and that I could really like make close friends with. Um, joining a sorority was an amazing way for me to make Madison into a smaller, you know, make it into a smaller community and really feel connected to the people um, that I'm, you know, interacting with on a daily basis. And the other thing is, going back to that, the community service that we do is crazy. I mean, we raised over $10,000 for um, the charity that we, it's, I mean, you don't need to get into it, but for the charity that we um, do our fundraisers for and that's an amazing amount of money and that's something really cool that we're able to do. I don't think you can deny that fraternities and sororities do very good things for the community because they do. I mean they have big philanthropy teams that sort of engage uh, engage with the community and raise a lot of funds for charities but I, I do kind of take issue with what Meredith said earlier in that they don't change you somehow. I don't think they change you necessarily in explicit ways and that you you know you're sort of sacrificing your interests or other friends or your academics or anything like that, but you do become acculturated into a different way of life. I was in a fraternity for two years and while I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the friends I had made, I enjoyed the environment, it was, there, there was a lot of camaraderie and it was really fun. I felt as though I was I was becoming different, and yeah. I wasn't able to really understand any, that, but it was happening. You got to be able to balance. Any group, though, that you're in. Yeah. So another controversy in the Greek system is hazing. Um, hazing has received a lot of attention, um, not only in Madison but nationally, just with the Greek system. Do you guys think that you know in 2009 is hazing still an issue? Yeah. Hazing's always an issue, and I'm not saying just, I'm not saying like it's our sorority, our, our sorority, and I feel like our Greek system has a very anti-hazing policy, and, and people do a really pretty good job of following that, but it still exists. Yeah. And I'm saying not like just in the Greek system, but I think any organization, I mean, people have their own little kind of initiation, you know, hazing things, and they exactly. may not be serious, but they're there. Like we could talk about one of the bands, like our band that got in trouble here for hazing. I mean. When you think of hazing, it's not necessarily just, you know, whatever comes to mind, but there's different types of hazing, so. Yeah. I also have, I mean, I, hazing, I think, is something that it's not, and it's not overarching over a whole group either. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, people get publicized Greek system, the band, but it was like a few people. 
I think it's important also to differentiate between sororities and fraternities and their ideas of what's considered hazing. Mm -hmm. um, I know that, you know, being in the sorority, I've never felt pressured. I've never felt like I was being hazed in a way that made me feel uncomfortable. And I've never been put in a situation that made me kind of be like, ah, oh, this is not quite right. But I think that, you know, maybe in fraternities that might be a little bit more of an issue, definitely depending on the fraternity. But I mean, you hear rumors going around campus. I, I would say the hazing is, is, is more severe in fraternities. Um, not that it's very widespread, but the type of hazing is more severe. I do think it does happen in sororities, though, too. I mean, I have some friends who have been in, uh, in, in sororities who have had to undergo certain practices. And it's not, and, and they don't think of them as negative. But you know, hazing is a very broad definition of making someone sort of do something you necessarily don't want so, to do. Exactly. So would you say that like sororities are more um, mentally, ha they mentally haze and men are more physical? I, I, I no, because I mean mentally haze like what brainwash or something? No, I, <laughs> I mean, mean, you know, people ch talking down to you, people, you know, that break you down to build no, your No, I mean, mentality. and I can only speak for my own house, you know, my own chapter and, you know, I our chapter we have freshmen and seniors who are really good friends, you know, and maybe, maybe we're just not the norm, I don't know, but, but I feel like our almost of our sororities, I didn't think you What would is agree. hazing, though, I think? I think that you really have to define the word hazing, because I think hazing is so general. For example, somebody is telling you to learn the history of an organization that you want to be a part of, like, why would you want to be in an organization if you didn't know any history about mm -hmm. it? It's like one half, you know, it's one like plus. You look a mess. Should I, <laughs> should I, should I button both of them? Now yeah. it's going to be different. <laughs> well, with all the, the talking we've been doing about drinking on campus, can you have fun without drinking on campus? I say yes. <laughs> I mean, my, the the thing that first comes to my mind uh, is sporting our sporting events. Mm -hmm. um, I love going to football games and hockey games and basketball games. They're so much, so much fun. And I know some people like to show up to them drunk, and I just can't. I can't imagine having fun drunk at something like that. Like, I think that's something that's that's really more fun sober. Yeah. I don't know. What about what, what are other event. things that you guys can? I'd say arts events on <laughs> campus. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of shows going on here at the Union. Um, there are movies locally that you can go to. Great bands that come to town in the Orpheum on campus, the Barrymore. Uh, I'm in a choir and. A I, I wouldn't, I'm in a choir, and you know I, I love to sing, and I also I'll attend That's the one. concerts okay. of other people, yeah. uh, of some of my friends who are in other other groups. So it's exciting. I mean, I think there's plenty to do um, other than drink. Yeah, being a student who's been here for five years, I've never drank alcohol. I I don't drink at all. I've never had a drop of alcohol in my entire life. I'm only 22, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I feel, I've, ha I've had a great time in my life. I mean, <laughs> but, but, but look like I can't this. say how do you know? How do you know? Career. This is gonna sound bad, but how do you know it wouldn't be better if you had a little sip? I mean, it ain't gonna be better. I mean, you have to have just just a little bit. It might be. <laughs> how much? You know, just get. a little bit. I can say this. <laughs> a great time. I can say this. Like, I don't like you know Crap people it. that go out there and just get real, just Make sloppy drunk. Loose. Just just a little bit. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you 21? <laughs> so what do you do then? I mean, what are some of the things that you do? I mean, I, I'm you telling you, I participate in tons of stuff. I, I, I'm a crafter, so I do plenty of crafts. I shop. I mean, I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, I cook. Ask any of my friends, I'm telling you, I cut it up in the kitchen. Oh, I love yes, to yes, I take advantage yes. of the surf. I, so I even tried some of that hoofer stuff out there on the ice. <laughs> yeah. you know, but I mean, I mean, a lot of the things that we're coming up with are things that you could do drunk or sober. And I think it's well, just kind of a personal choice. Well, you shouldn't probably do most of them. Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't think yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cooking, like dealing with an open Driving. Flight, fine. But yeah, right. No, but I'm saying like the activities that we've kind of been talking about, you could do either way. And you know, you don't drink. I didn't drink till I was 21. I was very anti-drinking for a very long time. And Dude, even so now cool. that I, I can drink and stuff, and I do every once in a while, then I, I still do a lot of things sober because I choose to. You know, I feel like yeah. just because you're of age or you're on, on campus doesn't mean you have to drink. And That's the thing. About this campus, like drinking is so much everywhere. Like who really needs... Say this. Who needs to go to a basketball game drunk, really? So I think another thing that students do um, beyond drinking is uh, they're really involved in student organizations on campus. They get a lot of fulfillment from that. I know a lot of us are involved. Uh, one question I have is, is there, are there too many student organizations on campus? Uh, we have over 700, right, on the UW Madison campus. That's a lot, okay? <laughs> there, there might be a duplication of services and interests and issue areas. Um, I would argue that we don't have too many, but there are certainly ones that are probably duplicating 
uh, what other groups are doing. I have a problem with people who form student organizations that maybe, I mean, okay, maybe they're necessary to a certain extent, but really they just do it so they can put it on their resume of, of oh, hey, I'm the director of mm -hmm. X and X. And really, that, like, though? what is your organization but if you're not actually actually doing? doing anything? Still, I think about when you start a student organization, you got to think about all the words that it takes to put exactly. in there. You have to write the proposals, you got to get grants, founding get, documents, founding documents, a charter, just getting an organization started. Who cares? Which I mean, you guys, you guys should do what you want to do. Like that's the, that's the thing I love about UW. You can make a club for being left-handed. You know, exactly. why not? Yeah. You just need three people, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. You got a constitution, you yeah. got a club. And you never know, I'm telling you, the weirdest things, like they got a meat eaters club, they got all kind of random stuff. People out there mm -hmm. playing Star Wars. And oh, yes, I've seen that, yes. You know, people, <laughs> I'm telling you, the littlest things yeah. that you think are quirky, I'm to somebody is having a ball. I agree with you. Yeah, and, and you. And you meet more people that way, too. I mean, you don't have to be, like, Greek or not to have it, friends. That's, that's <laughs> the big thing. Because exactly. it seems sometimes yeah. like on this campus that a lot of people just say, oh, you know, the only thing to do on this campus is be Greek. And it, there is other options. Like, for example, like, I am Greek, but at the same time, my favorite, like, one of my favorite organizations here on campus is SEALS, mm -hmm. which is Students for Equal Access to Law School. Like, they provide me with great resources, free LSAT tests, like, mm -hmm. there's other things to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this mm -hmm. university, that's, that's the definite beauty of UW-Madison is that it offers students the flexibility to go out and be you. Do, Absolutely. you know, able to just go out and do who you, be who you are, do what you want to do, and, you know, they have the resources for you, they have the advocates and the advisors, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you can go out and do amazing things here on campus. If you find as though your interests aren't being served by the current exactly. groups, yeah. you can you can find a new student organization, and even if you have a you know very small volunteer base. But I agree exactly. with what you said earlier, like how there is um, like a couple different organizations that will be serving in the same community, doing pretty much the same exact thing. Sometimes I feel like I mean there is good to be a, a diversity of ideas. But at the same time, you guys, while like, you all could be putting your resources together and getting even more funding, getting exactly. even more, you know, people to come in. This program is a production of the University of Wisconsin Madison. If you have comments about this broadcast, please email us at programming at uc.wisc.edu. <laughs> My car got snowed in one time, and nobody helped me. I was Man, so you, being here on campus, I've been suspect to walking back to my dormitory or back to my apartment late at night. So do you feel that it's safe to be on campus late at night here? I mean, I think it's just as safe as any other, you know, metropolitan area. I mean, you really should be walking with other people. I don't think it's safe to walk by yourself by any means, yeah. um, especially even when it's just starting to get dark. The problem I have, though, with Madison is that it, it has to understand that the city is growing. It's no longer a small city. You have the problems of a big city here. People mm -hmm. are, like, this is a major metropolitan area because it's right between Minneapolis, Milwaukee, and Chicago. We're right, you know, in the middle of it. So I think that we have to, because the problem is, like, when there's a problem that happens on campus, you hear about it for, like, a week, but after that, it just disappears. Yeah. Exactly. It disappears. They want to cover it up, like, everything is smooth in Madison, but we have to understand that there are issues that are happening here. And exactly. the, the community needs to be addressed about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I just think there are a lot of basic issues that aren't being addressed. For example, just the lighting issues. There are so many streets on campus where you just, I don't feel comfortable walking down because the lighting is so poor. Alleyways. And Yeah, exactly. And then also, if we look at kind of the allocation of the police force right now, how many police are going into the bars to make sure that all of the kids aren't under 21, and then we don't have any police monitoring the streets where there's actual crimes going on? That's I mean, not that yeah. underage drinking is not a crime, but, you know, it's not... There are a few local initiatives, though. There's the Langdon Street uh, Student Patrol Watch, right? right. right. And I, th I think that has worked, uh, you know, marginally to help deter crime. Uh, and I know student government in the past to neighborhood watch on the south end of campus, I think they might try to revive that. I mean, those local efforts... Which are help, which which are run by student volunteers are really useful. I think they they help. Yeah, I think students need to take a lot, take advantage of the resources that we do have as far as safe walk mm -hmm. and safe ride, and students participate like going to the campus women's center and getting just different information as far as women because I know a lot of times I feel that women are victimized in in attacks. It's like oh, well she was doing this, she was dressed that way, and if people are educated about attackers and attacks and being you know in groups and not and not doing things. That we traditionally say, you know, talk on a cell phone so then they won't get you, you know, things like that. If we de victimize it, I think right. it'll make people a lot more but aware. But it's all, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know, learn about these things. No one, I feel like, is actually making an effort to go out and learn about these things, you know, making an effort. And that that is kind of, that's an issue, you mm -hmm. know, what do we do about it? Is it just up to them? You know, is it just, I mean, it should be our responsibility, but does the university have any sort of I think obligation? It, I think it cuts both ways.
Well, we're down to our famous final words here. All right. So I have a few, a few random ones for you. First one, dorm food. I miss it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I miss hey. some of it. I could do without. Blech. That's what I have to say. Blech. The chicken stars. Hey, hey. <laughs> Don't get like on an 18 wheel. Being you. a vegetarian I on mean. campus is impossible with dorm food. It is so hard. I think it's hard it to be a vegetarian. Water, really? Really? Oh, hey, we got to give University Housing a chance. They really have tried to step mm -hmm. their efforts up as far as providing food for people who are vegans, people who are vegetarians, and given different options. They have a lot of different um, stores that they try to provide local food. And Kosher stuff. options. Exactly. Yeah. So Maybe that's changed a little bit since I was a freshman, but uh, I gotta say I had a really hard time with it. They're doing a good job now. What about, what about living in dorms? Personally, I think it's gotten a lot better since I was in the dorms. I was yeah. in my dorms the first two years, but yeah. they now have these new dorms going up and they're so nice and yeah. luxurious. Don't smell funny. My little brother lives in the Smith dorms and his dorm is literally twice as big as mine was. His is, it's beautiful, it's very nice, like very clean. They've got it good. Yeah. yeah. I think it's great for a year or two, but it's, I think living in apartments is helpful because you have to take care of yourself more, right? You have to cook, you, you're doing your own cleaning, you can't rely on housing staff. Uh, so I think it, it kind of comes with uh, But at the same time, I don't think, you know, as a sophomore, you should automatically go to an apartment. That's yeah. what I feel like what a lot of, that's exactly. what a lot of people do, and I feel like, why? I mean, dorms are cost effective in, re in reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just, my mom calls it fake living. I lived in dorms for four years, Why'd and I loved it. Because you feel like, you know, somebody cleaning your bathroom. The mm -hmm. only thing you do is have to fix your bed and pick stuff up off the floor. Somebody else I mean, that little room, you kind of treat like an apartment. I, my, my dorm room, I was like, I'm a man, you know, I'm a Make this look real nice. I have posters, a car. <laughs> I had like a little carpet I put in there. I treated it like a little apartment. So I took a lot of pride. I mean, I didn't like it because, you know, it was like a jail cell with two rooms <laughs> in there. So I didn't necessarily like that part. But, you know, I, I took pride in my dorm room. You know, I, plus the community that you have in there. Mm. Like the community, most of my friends I met there. My freshman year, like playing football at midnight in the hallway or just going to. And yo ho. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we were just real, like, whatever. So what about the Memorial Union or, you know, public meeting spaces that we have on campus. Man, drab. Very. Really? What? I love yeah. the union. I love the union. I like the union. It's so old and I, like, That's why to, I like it, though, because it's old. I want something new. Give me some. It's, some, it's, it's the heart of campus. That'll never change. It's going to be right. The preceding program was produced by the University of Wisconsin in association with the Big Ten Network.